I am Buzz Aldrin, and I was the lunar module pilot on Apollo 11. We thought we needed a confirmation as soon as possible from the ground. Fifty years ago this week, the world watched as Apollo 11 launched. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. And days later, astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin made history by landing on the moon. The astronauts who first set foot on the moon. As the second person to walk on the lunar surface, Buzz Aldrin's legacy is unforgettable. However, a detail from an old interview is now raising new questions about the Apollo 11 mission. I never confessed that to anybody at that time. I was afraid I'd be grounded. In this lesser known conversation, Aldrin made a cryptic comment saying, I saw something that didn't belong in the dust. This remark went unnoticed at the time. But when the interview resurfaced, it sparked renewed curiosity. Altitude 4200. Go for landing, over. Some now wonder if Aldrin and Armstrong witnessed something unusual on the moon, something that may have been kept secret from the public. Aldrin's choice of words, including the phrase, sorry, we lie, has fueled speculation about what might have really happened on that historic journey. Hey, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Were there discoveries that were too controversial to share? At 94, Buzz Aldrin's statements continue to intrigue and raise questions about what the moon may still be hiding. An introduction to the man. Buzz Aldrin was born as Edwin Eugene Aldrin Jr. on January 20, 1930, at Mountainside Hospital in Glen Ridge, New Jersey. His parents, Edwin Eugene Aldrin Sr. and Marion Aldrin, lived in the nearby town of Montclair. His father was a World War I Army aviator and worked as the assistant commandant of the Army's test pilot school at McCook Field in Ohio from 1919 to 1922. He left the Army in 1928 and later became an executive at Standard Oil. Buzz had two older sisters, Madeline and Faye Ann. His nickname, Buzz, which became his legal name in 1988, came from Faye's mispronunciation of the word brother as buzzer, which was later shortened to buzz. He was also a Boy Scout, achieving the rank of Tenderfoot Scout. Aldrin excelled in school, consistently earning high grades. He played football and was the starting center for Montclair High School's undefeated 1946 state championship team. His father wanted him to attend the United States Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland, so he enrolled Buzz at Severn School, a preparatory school for Annapolis. Buzz's father even secured a nomination for him to attend the academy from New Jersey, Senator Albert W. Hawks. However, Aldrin had other plans for his future. He disliked ships and suffered from seasickness, and he felt that they were a distraction from his passion for flying airplanes. He asked his father to change his nomination from the Naval Academy to the United States Military Academy at West Point. In 1947, Aldrin entered West Point, where he performed well academically, finishing first in his class during his first year. He was also an athlete, competing in pole vaulting for the Academy's track and field team. In 1950, he traveled to Japan and the Philippines with a group of West Point cadets to study the military policies of General Douglas MacArthur. While he was there, the Korean War broke out. Aldrin graduated from West Point on June 5, 1951, earning a Bachelor of Science degree in mechanical engineering. He graduated third in his class. As one of the top graduates in his class, Aldrin had his pick of assignments. He chose the newly formed United States Air Force, which became a separate branch of the military in 1947 and did not yet have its own academy at the time. Aldrin was commissioned as a second lieutenant and began basic flight training in T-6 Texans at Bartow Air Base in Florida. Aldrin once attempted a difficult double Immelman turn maneuver in a T-28 Trojan and lost consciousness for a brief moment. He recovered just in time to avoid a potentially fatal crash, pulling out of the dive at around 2,000 feet. When deciding which type of aircraft to fly, Aldrin's father advised him to choose bombers, as commanding a bomber crew would provide valuable leadership experience and better career prospects. In December 1952, Aldrin was assigned to the 16th Fighter Interceptor Squadron, part of the 51st Fighter Interceptor Wing, stationed at Suwon Air Base, 
about 20 miles south of Seoul, South Korea. The squadron was involved in combat during the Korean War. On one of his early missions, the main fuel system of his aircraft froze at full power, risking the quick depletion of his fuel. Aldrin manually overrode the system, but this required holding down a button, preventing him from using the radio. He successfully returned to base, flying under enforced radio silence. Over the course of the war, Aldrin flew 66 combat missions in F-86 Sabres and shot down two MiG-15 aircraft. Aldrin's second victory came on June 4, 1953, when he engaged in a series of scissor maneuvers with a MiG. Although his gun sight malfunctioned, Aldrin manually sighted his guns and fired, forcing the MiG pilot to eject. For his service, Aldrin was awarded two distinguished flying crosses and three air medals. He completed his tour in December 1953 after the end of the fighting in Korea. Aldrin graduated from the Squadron Officer School at Maxwell Air Force Base in 1955, and from 1956 to 1959, he served as a flight commander with the 22nd Fighter Squadron, 36th Fighter Wing. While in Germany, Aldrin befriended astronaut Ed White, who encouraged him to pursue further education. White later became the first American to walk in space. In 1959, Aldrin enrolled in a graduate program at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology through the Air Force Institute of Technology, with the initial goal of earning a master's degree in astronautics. Richard Batten, a key figure in astrodynamics, taught one of his classes. Fellow USAF officers David Scott, Edgar Mitchell, and Charles Duke, all future astronauts, also studied at MIT around the same time. Inspired by his coursework, Aldrin decided to pursue a doctorate instead. In January 1963, he earned his SCD in astronautics. His doctoral thesis, titled Line of Sight Guidance Techniques for Manned Orbital Rendezvous, was dedicated to the astronauts of the space program, reflecting his desire to join their ranks. After completing his doctorate, Aldrin worked at the Gemini Target Office of the Air Force Space Systems Division in Los Angeles. There, he collaborated with Lockheed Aircraft Corporation to improve the maneuvering capabilities of the Agena target vehicle, which was a critical component of NASA's Project Gemini missions. He was then posted to the Space Systems Division's field office at NASA's Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston, where he helped integrate Department of Defense experiments into the Gemini program. These contributions positioned Aldrin for his eventual selection as an astronaut. In 1963, Buzz was selected as part of NASA's third group of astronauts. His first space flight was as a pilot of Gemini 12 in 1966. This was also where he performed the first successful spacewalk and demonstrated techniques that would be used in future missions. This mission cemented his reputation as a capable and innovative astronaut. But it was on July 20th, 1969, that Buzz Aldrin made history. As the lunar module pilot on Apollo 11, he and Neil Armstrong became the first humans to set foot on the moon. The image of Buzz standing on the lunar surface saluting the American flag is etched in the annals of history. His words, beautiful view, magnificent desolation, captured the stark beauty and profound emptiness of the lunar landscape. Buzz's contributions to space exploration didn't end with Apollo 11. After returning from the moon, he continued to work with NASA, and right up to his old age, he advocated for space missions and developed strategies for future exploration. He authored several books in which he shared his experiences and vision for the future of humanity in space. Throughout his career, Buzz faced numerous challenges. These include personal struggles with depression and alcoholism. However, his resilience and determination saw him overcome these obstacles and emerge as a vocal advocate for mental health awareness. In addition to his technical achievements, Buzz Aldrin became a cultural icon. His appearances on television, in movies, and even as a character in video games have made him a beloved figure beyond the scientific community.
His charismatic personality and unwavering passion for space exploration have inspired generations to look to the stars and dream of what lies beyond. As Buzz Aldrin sat before the audience at 94, his legacy was undeniable. A pioneer, a hero, and a living testament to the spirit of exploration, he was ready to confirm what they all suspected and share one more piece of his incredible story. Apollo 11 Mission Preparation The selection process for the Apollo 11 mission was both thorough and careful. NASA needed to make sure the astronauts chosen for this historic mission were the best of the best. The goal was clear, to land a man on the moon and bring him safely back to Earth. This was no easy task. It required not only physical strength and technical expertise, but also the mental toughness to handle the unknown challenges of space travel. The three astronauts selected for Apollo 11 were Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin. Each of them brought different skills and experiences to the team. Buzz Aldrin's selection as the lunar module pilot was largely due to his strong qualifications and outstanding performance on previous missions, especially Gemini 12. His knowledge of orbital mechanics and pioneering work in spacewalking made him a key part of the mission. NASA's decision to include Buzz was based not only on his technical skills, but also on his ability to stay calm under pressure and think creatively when solving problems. The preparation for Apollo 11 was intense and detailed. The astronauts went through a wide range of physical tests to ensure they were in top shape. These tests included cardiovascular workouts, strength training, and simulations of what it would be like to work in space's microgravity environment. The goal was to build up their endurance and ensure they were physically ready for the entire mission. On top of the physical training, the Apollo 11 crew completed countless simulations to prepare for every possible situation they might face. These simulations covered everything from routine tasks to emergency procedures. The idea was to get the astronauts ready for anything, whether it was a system malfunction or an unexpected change in the mission plan. Buzz Aldrin, known for his attention to detail, thrived in this environment. He spent hours studying the lunar module's systems and practicing the skills he would need during the mission. The lunar module, called Eagle, was an incredible piece of technology, but it required careful handling and a deep understanding of its systems. Thanks to his background in astronautics and experience in the Gemini program, Buzz was well prepared. One of the most important parts of the training was practicing the lunar landing itself. The astronauts used several simulators, including the lunar landing training vehicle, which allowed them to practice landing on the moon's surface under conditions that closely mimicked real life. These sessions helped the astronauts develop the muscle memory and quick reflexes they would need to operate the lunar module in the moon's low gravity. In addition to landing practice, the astronauts also trained in geology. They learned how to identify and collect samples from the moon's surface. This training was led by top geologists, who made sure the astronauts would be able to gather scientifically valuable materials. Because while the main goal was to land on the moon, there was also the goal of bringing back samples. These samples were going to help the geologists better understand what the moon was made of. Throughout the training, teamwork and communication were emphasized. The Apollo 11 crew needed to work together smoothly. Each astronaut had to fully understand their role and how it fit into the mission as a whole. Aldrin had a strong relationship with Armstrong and Collins, built on respect and a shared dedication to making the mission a success. As the launch date drew closer, the training became even more intense. Every procedure was practiced over and over again. Every detail was carefully examined. Buzz Aldrin knew that the world would be watching, and the mission's success depended on their preparation and precision. All of this hard work led up to the launch of Apollo 11 on July 16, 1969. As Buzz Aldrin strapped into the lunar module and felt the powerful vibrations of the Saturn V rocket, he knew they were ready. Years of training, 
study, and dedication had led to this moment. The world watched as Apollo 11 rose into the sky, carrying with it the hopes and dreams of millions of people. Buzz Aldrin and his fellow astronauts were about to make history. The Moon Landing The Apollo 11 mission still stands as one of humanity's greatest achievements. It was a moment when the entire world united in awe and wonder. On July 16, 1969, as the Saturn V rocket lifted off from Kennedy Space Center, Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, and Michael Collins were propelled toward the moon. They carried with them the hopes and dreams of millions. As the rocket ascended, the roar of the engines, the intense vibrations, and the incredible force of the launch were overwhelming. But Buzz was fully focused on the mission ahead. After all, each step had been meticulously planned and rehearsed. The journey to the moon took three days. On the way, the crew conducted various checks and maneuvers to ensure everything was functioning correctly. Michael Collins remained in the command module Columbia. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin transferred to the lunar module Eagle. As they approached the moon, the tension mounted. The descent to the lunar surface would be the most critical and challenging part of the mission. On July 20th, 1969, the world held its breath as the Eagle began its descent. Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong were intensely focused on their instruments and the lunar landscape below. The descent was not without its challenges. The computer issued several alarms due to overload, but the ground control team at NASA quickly assessed the situation and gave the go-ahead to continue the descent. Buzz's heart pounded as they neared the surface. He provided a running commentary on their altitude and velocity and assisted Neil in piloting the module. The landing site was strewn with boulders. This forced Neil to manually maneuver the Eagle to a safer spot. Fuel was running low, and the seconds seemed to stretch into eternity. At 4.17 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Neil Armstrong's voice came through the radio. Houston, tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. Buzz Aldrin later spoke about the immense relief and excitement he felt in that moment. They had done it. The first humans had successfully landed on the moon, but there wasn't much time to celebrate. They had a detailed schedule to stick to, and after completing several post-landing checks, it was time to make history by stepping onto the lunar surface. Neil Armstrong was the first to descend the ladder of the lunar module. As he placed his foot on the moon, he said the famous words, That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Shortly after, Buzz Aldrin followed. When his boots touched the moon's surface, he was struck by the stark beauty of the scene. Beautiful view, magnificent desolation, he said, perfectly capturing the mix of awe and emptiness that defined the lunar landscape. Walking on the moon was a surreal experience. The low gravity made it easier to move, and Buzz took full advantage of this, hopping and bouncing across the surface. Together with Neil, they planted the American flag, took photos, and collected samples of lunar rock and soil. Every action was carefully recorded to gather important data for scientists on Earth. Buzz's mind raced with thoughts and emotions during these moments. Looking at the vastness of space, seeing Earth hanging like a distant ball in the black sky, and knowing he was part of a historic event, it was overwhelming. One of the highlights of their time on the moon was setting up scientific experiments. Buzz and Neil deployed the early Apollo scientific experiments package, which included a seismometer to measure moonquakes and a retro reflector to bounce laser beams from Earth. These experiments would help scientists make precise measurements of the distance between the Earth and the Moon. The entire experience, from the landing to the experiments, was meticulously planned, and every moment felt like a step forward for human exploration. Buzz Aldrin's journey to the Moon and his work alongside Neil Armstrong made their mission a landmark achievement in human history. Their time on the Moon was limited to just over two hours but it felt like a lifetime. Every step, every action, was a step into the unknown.
a contribution to humanity's understanding of the cosmos. The realization that they were alone on this distant new land, where no man has been before, with no atmosphere to carry sound, and only the black void of space surrounding them, was both humbling and awe-inspiring. Buzz Aldrin recalled a tense moment during their mission, saying, I saw something that didn't belong in the dust. It looked like a circuit breaker, and in all the movement and tossing of equipment before their lunar walk, one of the astronauts had accidentally knocked something against Aldrin's side of the instrument panel. This snapped off the switch that provided power to the ascent engine. Without that power, the engine wouldn't ignite, and the crew would be stranded on the moon, leaving Michael Collins orbiting alone in the Apollo command module. Aldrin noticed the issue after they had closed the hatch. Looking out the window, he saw the problem. We got up on my side and looked, and it was the engine arm circuit breaker, he said. The situation seemed dire, but the solution was surprisingly simple and a bit improvised. The stem of the broken switch was still visible, but it was recessed inside a small hole in the instrument panel. It was too small for a finger to reach, but Aldrin realized a felt-tip pen might work, preventing the risk of a metal-on-metal -metal short circuit. He had one on hand and used it. With the help of this small plastic tool, they fixed the switch and history was made. The lunar module successfully lifted off the moon's surface. Though they had achieved something monumental, the crew was eager to return to Earth and share their incredible experience. On July 24, 1969, Apollo 11 splashed down safely in the Pacific Ocean and the astronauts were recovered. Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, and Michael Collins were celebrated as heroes, having brought back invaluable data that confirmed much of what scientists had suspected about the moon. Their mission was a historic success. Life After the Moon Landing Life After the Moon Landing brought Buzz Aldrin a whirlwind of fame and recognition. As one of the first humans to set foot on another celestial body, Buzz returned to Earth as a global icon. However, the transition from astronaut to public figure was not without its difficulties. Upon returning from the historic Apollo 11 mission, Buzz, along with Neil Armstrong and Michael Collins, embarked on a worldwide tour known as the Giant Leap Tour. They visited 24 countries in 45 days. Despite the adulation, Buzz found it challenging to adjust to his newfound fame. The constant public appearances and media attention were overwhelming. He had gone from the intense focus and discipline of the NASA program to a life filled with speaking engagements, interviews, and public ceremonies. The abrupt change in pace and the loss of the structured environment he had thrived in left him feeling adrift. In the years following Apollo 11, Buzz faced several personal struggles. He grappled with depression and alcoholism, conditions that were exacerbated by the pressures of fame and the lack of a clear purpose after achieving what many considered the pinnacle of human achievement. The high of the moon landing was followed by a profound sense of emptiness and confusion about what to do next. Buzz's marriage to his first wife, Joan Archer, also suffered. Despite these hardships, Buzz remained deeply committed to space exploration. He became an outspoken advocate for space missions, promoting future endeavors, including the idea of establishing a human presence on Mars. His technical knowledge and personal experiences made him a respected figure in the scientific community, and he often emphasized the need for continued advancements in human spaceflight. Buzz also turned to writing as a way to share his journey and insights. He authored several books, including autobiographies and science fiction novels, offering a unique perspective on space exploration. Beyond writing, he became involved in education and entrepreneurship. He founded the ShareSpace Foundation, a nonprofit organization focused on inspiring young people in science and space education. Through this foundation, Buzz hoped to encourage the next generation of scientists, engineers, and astronauts to pursue careers in STEM. 
At 94 years old, Buzz Aldrin decided it was time to address the speculations and rumors that had surrounded the Apollo 11 mission for decades. In a much-anticipated press conference, the world watched as Buzz finally stepped forward to share his thoughts and insights on the historic event, The Real Truth. He was ready to share what many hoped would be the definitive answer to the lingering questions about the moon landing. Buzz began by acknowledging the incredible journey that had led to this moment. I've been asked countless times about the moon landing, and today I want to set the record straight, he said. The Apollo 11 mission was a monumental achievement and it's time to put the rumors to rest once and for all. The room was silent. Everyone leaned forward in anticipation. Buzz Aldrin knew that addressing the conspiracy theories directly was important. He wanted to focus on the real achievements of space exploration, which often got lost in the noise of sensationalism. First and foremost, he said, the moon landing was real. Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins and I went to the moon. We landed, and we brought back proof that scientists all over the world have studied. Buzz pointed to the undeniable evidence, rocks and soil samples, telemetry data, photographs and hours of video footage, all confirming their journey. Next, he tackled some of the most common rumors. People often talk about anomalies in the photos and videos, like the waving flag or the missing stars, he explained. The flag seemed to wave because it had a horizontal rod to keep it extended, and it moved when they planted it in the lunar soil. As for the stars, the camera settings were focused on the brightly lit lunar surface, making the faint stars less visible. He paused to let the facts settle in. There's also been confusion about the shadows and lighting in the photos. The uneven ground and multiple light sources like the sun and reflections from the lunar surface created shadows that seemed unusual, but it's all basic physics. Buzz's tone softened as he addressed a more personal rumor. One of the most persistent claims is that the moon landing was faked in a Hollywood studio. I can tell you, without a doubt, that what you saw on July 20th, 1969, was real. Despite these hardships, Buzz remained deeply committed to space exploration. He became an outspoken advocate for space missions. He emphasized the years of training, the countless challenges, and the risks they faced. The idea that we would fake such an achievement is not just absurd, it's deeply insulting to everyone who worked so hard to make it happen. He looked around the room and said that he understands why some people have doubts. Having brought back invaluable data that confirmed much of what scientists had suspected about the moon. Their mission was a historic success. Life after the moon landing. The scope of what everyone at NASA accomplished was unprecedented, and it's natural for people to question the unknown. But the truth is, the Apollo 11 mission was a testament to human ingenuity, determination, and courage. It was a collective effort that involved thousands of brilliant minds working together to achieve the impossible. Buzz Aldrin then shared a moment from the mission that had stayed with him throughout the years. When Neil and I stood on the lunar surface looking back at Earth, we felt a deep sense of awe and responsibility, he said. We knew that our small steps were part of a much bigger journey, one that would inspire future generations to explore, to question, and to reach for the stars. As he neared the end of his speech, Buzz made a heartfelt plea. Let's move past the conspiracy theories and focus on the remarkable achievements of the Apollo program. Let's honor the legacy of everyone who made it possible and continue to support the exploration of space. The future of humanity depends on our willingness to push boundaries and seek the truth. Buzz emphasized the dedication and hard work of everyone involved in these missions. Neither I nor anyone else who worked on these missions will ever say, I'm sorry we lied, because we've always been transparent about the struggles we faced and the results we achieved. The audience erupted in applause, paying tribute to a man who had spent his life pushing the boundaries of what humanity could achieve. As he stepped down from the stage, the world was reminded once more of the incredible journey that took us to the moon and back, and the undeniable truth of that historic event. Reflections and Legacy Buzz Aldrin achieved feats that most people can only dream of, yet he always remained humble about his role in space exploration. He often said, I've been incredibly fortunate. I have been part of something so much larger than myself. 
The journey to the moon was not just my journey, but the journey of all humanity. He frequently reflects on the profound impact of the Apollo 11 mission. He is keenly aware that their historic moon landing inspired generations and ignited a global passion for space exploration. Standing on the lunar surface, looking back at Earth, I felt a connection to everyone back home. It was a reminder of how small our planet is and how interconnected we all are, he said. This perspective shaped his views on international cooperation and the need for united efforts in space exploration. Beyond the technical achievements, Buzz emphasizes the symbolic importance of their mission. The Apollo 11 mission was a testament to what humans could accomplish when driven by a common goal. The moon landing wasn't just about science and technology, it was about human spirit and perseverance, he reflected. It showed us that no dream is too big if we have the courage to pursue it. Buzz's thoughts on the future of space exploration are optimistic and forward-looking. He is an advocate for missions to Mars and passionately believes that humanity's next great leap should be the colonization of the Red Planet. Mars is within our reach, he often said. It's not a question of if we will go, but when. And when we do, it will open up new horizons for exploration and discovery. He is particularly excited about involving young people in the quest for space. Buzz's reflections are also marked by a profound sense of responsibility. He believes that space exploration is not just about discovering new worlds. It is about ensuring the survival and prosperity of humanity. The challenges we face on Earth resource depletion, overpopulation, climate change, can find solutions in space exploration, he would argue. By pushing the boundaries of our knowledge and capabilities, we can secure a better future for all. In his twilight years, Buzz Aldrin remains a steadfast advocate for space exploration. In the end, Buzz Aldrin's story is not just about the past, it is about the future. As we look to the stars, we are reminded of the incredible journey that brought us here and the pioneers, like Buzz Aldrin, who made it all possible. His legacy will continue to inspire and guide us as we embark on the next great adventure in the history of space exploration. But there's just so many people out there who still don't believe that the entire thing was real. Despite the proofs, despite the constant reassurances from the first man on the moon, the internet continues to overflow with conspiracy theories about the moon landing. Why? Let's find out. Why people keep saying the moon landing was fake? Guys, it took over 400,000 NASA employees and contractors to send Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin to the moon in 1969. However, it only took one man to start the idea that the entire mission was a hoax. That man was Bill Kazing. Kaysing's belief that the U.S. lacked the technology to land on the moon began as a hunch, eventually growing into what he called a true conviction. Despite having a connection to the space program as an employee of Rocketdyne, a company that helped design the Saturn V rocket engines, Kaysing doubted the moon landing's authenticity. In 1976, he self-published a pamphlet titled We Never Went to the Moon, America's $30 billion swindle, in which he presented theories to support his belief. The pamphlet included grainy photocopies and claims that the landing was staged, and though his theories were unfounded, they have remained influential. Today, they are kept alive through Hollywood movies, Fox News documentaries, Reddit forums, and YouTube channels. Despite overwhelming evidence supporting the moon landings, including 382 kilograms of moon rock collected during six different missions, photos, video footage, and independent confirmations from Russia, Japan, and China, belief in the moon landing hoax has persisted since 1969. Among groups such as 9-11 truthers, anti-vaxxers, chemtrail believers, flat earthers, holocaust deniers, and Sandy Hook conspiracists, the moon hoax theory is often accepted as fact. Even notable figures like podcast host Joe Rogan and YouTuber Shane Dawson have expressed doubts about the moon landings. Bill Casing's original doubts about the moon landing included concerns such as the absence of stars in the pictures, 
the lack of a blast crater under the lunar module, and the way the shadows fell in the photos. But we've already talked about that. As Buzz said, it's just physics. Despite that, Casing maintained until his death in 2005 that the moon landing was staged in a TV studio, calling it a fraud. While Casing was right about NASA's early challenges, his belief that the U.S. couldn't have pulled off such a feat is incorrect. After the Soviets launched Sputnik 1 in 1957, followed by Sputnik 2, NASA had to play catch-up. The U.S. space program was practically non-existent when NASA was founded in 1958. It wasn't until 1961 that Alan Shepard became the first American in space, but by that time, the Soviet space program had already achieved several milestones, including sending the first woman into space and the first spacewalk. Meanwhile, NASA faced major setbacks, including the Apollo 1 disaster, where a fire on the launch pad killed all three astronauts. The theory that the moon landing was faked entered mainstream discussion in 2001 when Fox News aired a documentary called Did We Land on the Moon? This program reignited Casing's ideas, repackaging them for a new audience. Conspiracy theories about the moon landing were further fueled by Hollywood films. In Diamonds Are Forever, a chase scene takes place on a film set made to look like the moon. Similarly, the 1978 film Capricorn One presented a story about a faked Mars mission, reflecting the growing belief in government deception following the Watergate scandal. As NASA looks to return to the moon, possibly as soon as 2028, the moon hoax theory might eventually give way to new conspiracies about Mars. Nonetheless, the fascination with these theories reveals that many people still view the Apollo missions as significant, even if they doubt their authenticity. Well, that's it for today. Let us know in the comments below what you think about the moon landing and the conspiracy theories surrounding it. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content just like this.